Hi everyone, my name is Isabel Hu, and I'm happy to talk to you today about my research on AI-assisted medical image analysis for breast cancer diagnosis using multi-parametric MRI. About 12% of women in the U.S. are diagnosed with breast cancer in the course of their lifetimes. In recent years, breast MRI has increased in clinical use for breast cancer screening, staging, and treatment monitoring because it has multiple advantages over other modalities like mammography and ultrasound, and is especially beneficial for some high-risk patient groups. Modern MRI exams are uh, multi-parametric, which means that we acquire multiple MRI sequences during one exam. This figure shows a few example MRI sequences taken during the same exam for the same patient. These images clearly look different, and they provide complementary information of the anatomy being imaged. One sequence is called the dynamic contrast enhanced sequence, um, where we take one image beforehand and inject, inject a contrast agent into the patient and take a sequence of images afterwards. And there are different contrast enhancement and washout patterns in different tissue types, which help radiologists categorize lesions. Another sequence commonly used is called the diffusion weighted MRI. Uh, or DWI sequence, which measures the random movement of water molecule and tissue. And because benign and malignant breast lesions exhibit different amounts of water diffusion, they will look differently on DWI as well. In a breast MRI exam, DCE is the main sequence. It has very high sensitivity, but moderate specificity. And studies have shown that multi-parametric MRI, which also includes T2-weighted and DWI sequences, can improve the clinical breast cancer diagnostic outcome. However, clinical interpretation of MRI exams is very labor-intensive and is prone to observer variability. So computer-aided diagnosis methods continue to be developed to help in the image interpretation process. Um, but most previous studies on breast MRI CADX focus on using the DCE sequence alone. So our objective is to develop CADX methods that integrate information from multiple MRI sequences to improve the classification performance in a task of dis distinguishing between benign and malignant breast lesions. We acquired a database from UChicago Medicine over several years. In total, we have 927 unique lesions, 21% was uh, benign and 79% malignant. We used convolutional neural networks pre-trained to classify natural images and transfer the ways to classify breast lesions on MRI images. Our model is based on the VGG19 architecture um, and we modified it to extract feature maps from all the max pooling layers at various depths of the network and concatenated them in the end so that we can use both low level general features and high level abstract features. For the DCE sequence, we subtracted the pre-contrast image from one of the post-contrast images and took the maximum intensity projection along the axial dimension. For the T2A sequence, we selected a representative center slice for each lesion. And we cropped a region of interest around each lesion for, from both sequences and extracted features using our model. Um, then we trained an SEM classifier to predict a probability of malignancy score for each lesion and finally performed ROC analysis to evaluate the performance. Our training and evaluation was done on a nested five-fold cross-validation split by patient. And our class weight was assigned to be inversely proportional to class prevalence in order to address the class imbalance issue. Our first multi-parametric method was image fusion, where the DCE image was input into the red channel and a T2-weighted image was input into the green channel to form this RGB fusion image, which um, naturally fit into our model because it was pre-trained on color images. Our second multi-parametric method was feature fusion, where we used the ensemble of features extracted from the two MRI sequences to train a classifier. And our third method was classifier fusion, where we aggregated the prediction scores from the two classifiers by soft voting. We compared all the classification schemes using the DeLong test and accounted for multiple comparison using the bonferroni home method. This figure shows the prediction scores um, from the T2-weighted sequence versus those from the DCE sequence, 
we observed that there is notable disagreement between the two, suggesting that using both of them will likely improve the result. We found that feature fusion yielded the best result among the three multiparametric methods, um, which achieved an AUC of 0.87, and it was um, significantly higher than using either DCE or T2-weighted sequence alone. To improve our result, there was another problem that we wanted to solve, which was um, that models pre-trained on natural images require 2D inputs, which limits the ability of utilizing the wealth of information in high dimensional medical images that we want to analyze. However, because uh, medical image data sets are usually small or moderate in size, high dimensional models are generally not suitable for our tasks. So we wanted to investigate deep learning methods that can analyze high dimensional breast MRI exams to classify benign malignant breast lesions while still taking advantage of transfer learning and maintaining a relatively low number of model parameters. We acquired a bigger data set from a different institution, um, which allowed us to perform independent training and testing. To mimic a first development and then clinical use scenario, we used the um, 1,455 lesions imaged in 2015 and 2016 for training and validation, and the 525 lesions imaged in 2017 for testing. We incorporated four time points from the DCE sequence by inputting the first post-contrast image into the red channel, the second post-contrast image into the green channel, and the third post-contrast image into the blue channel to obtain this 3D RGB ROI for the lesion volume. And from the 3D RGB ROI lesion volume, one route was to reduce the 3D image volume to 2D by taking the maximum intensity projection. And the classification pipeline um, from there was similar as before. And another route was to extract features from all slices in the lesion volume and reduce the 3D feature space to 2D by taking the most significant occurrence of each feature across all slices in a lesion volume. The image MIP method yielded an AUC of 0.91, and the feature MIP method achieved an AUC of 0.93, and the difference between them was significant, um, showing that incorporating volumetric information in DCE MRI by feature MIP in deep learning demonstrated superior classification performance compared to image MIP. Again, we can observe moderate disagreement between the two methods. And I'm also showing some example ROIs here, both the uh, MIP RGB ROI and the 3D RGB ROI slice by slice. In these two cases, um, both methods predicted very accurately and they agreed with each other. However, in these two cancer cases, for example, um, the MIP ROI failed to retain some important malignant features of the lesion in the projection process. So the feature MIP method um, predicted much more accurately. And in these two benign cases, the MIP ROI seemed to have captured some misleading features that make the lesion appear more malignant, but were actually not um, accurate representations of the lesion volumes themselves. And so again, the feature MIP method predicted better um, than the image MIP method. And then we extended the feature MIP method to um, all three sequences in the MPMRI exam and used the feature fusion method, which we found previously to be superior um, to integrate multiparametric information from these three sequences. So the input ROI for all sequences are um, lesion volumes. And for the DWI input, which we didn't talk about before, we input three DWI images acquired using um, three different B values, diffusion strength, um, into the RGB channels. So we created the appropriate input ROIs from the three MRI sequences to be analyzed by our model, um, at the end of which the feature vectors were reduced to 2D by max pooling, and then concatenated um, the feature vectors from the three sequences and finally, a multilayer perceptron produced a prediction of the probability of malignancy. We initialized the models with ImageNet weights 
and the whole pipeline was fine tuned from end to end. Our model architecture um, is the same modified VG19 that I showed before, and this is the structure of the final MLP. Our results showed that our um, MPMRI method yielded an AUC of 0.94, which again was significantly higher than using any of the single sequence um, and was the highest that we have achieved for this task so far. To better understand our model prediction and the contribution of each MRI sequence, we also generated GRATCAM heat maps. I'm showing two example lesions here, one benign lesion on the left and one cancer lesion on the right. The first row shows one slice from each input ROI lesion volume, and the second row has the um, GRATCAM heat map overlaid. In both of these cases, you can see that our MPMRI method predicted um, more accurately than using any single MRI sequence alone, which you can see here. We also reviewed the heat maps from all cases in our test set. In some cases, we saw that the lesion itself was highlighted, especially areas that exhibited uh, heterogeneity, which a lot of cancerous lesions have. And some other cases also seem to highlight angiogenesis on the periphery of the lesion or some satellite lesions, which could also be clinically useful because it can draw doctors' attention to those areas to further evaluate them. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge many people who have supported my research as well as our funding sources. I also wanna briefly mention that since the pandemic started, I've been also doing some COVID-19 related research and I would certainly welcome discussions in that topic as well. Thank you all for listening. I'll be happy to take any questions.